some uh, uh, information before starting. Um, on Monday, we sent out uh, the tokens for the election. So please check, check your uh, spam folder or um, in any other folder you are filtering the messages. And if you can't find uh, the um, email with the tokens and the instructions, please reach out to us. Uh, apart from, uh, from this, uh, yeah, this is the last uh, uh, session of this uh, experiment that we are trying uh, to, to make. So I hope uh, you enjoyed uh, the previous two. And uh, we have uh, published uh, the recording of the second session. Uh, unfortunately, we had an issue with, uh, with the audio of the first uh, session. And uh, that one is uh, not really usable. So I will, uh, I will send out, in any case, uh, uh, a note also for, uh, for the community members uh, that are not TDF members. So in uh, on board discuss, uh, explaining uh, that uh, yeah, that uh, recording is uh, is not available. And uh, apart from this, um, as usual, welcome uh, and thanks a lot to all the candidates for uh, finding uh, the time for uh, yet another session. And uh, of course, also to the a team that is helping uh, in, uh, with, the, with the technical part uh, uh, of these uh, sessions. Uh, and of course, uh, thanks to the uh, community members that uh, are joining, uh, uh, asking questions uh, and making uh, the, the sessions uh, interactive. So I think it's uh, uh, now a kind of tradition to start uh, with uh, a a round of uh, introduction. I know that can sound a bit weird uh, for the candidates that were here already the previous two sessions, but uh, we have uh, new people around, so I think it's uh, good. So as usual, uh, five minutes uh, where uh, the candidates uh, will uh, introduce themselves uh, and will uh, tell uh, why they want to run for the board and uh, which are the their, let's say, plans for, uh, for this term. So, starting in order, I'm just following the, the list I can see here on Jitsi. Uh, the, the first one is uh, Cor. Stage is your. Sorry. You are muted, Cor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I'm always muted at home. Why is that? Um, I, I'm, I'm Cor Naus, the Netherlands. Um, um, I'm involved in, in open source office software since 2004, when I started a small company in the Netherlands, uh, and, and that was with openoffice.org. I had some experience with Microsoft Office and, uh, and Lotus Notes, IBM, uh, but uh, somehow I, I, I felt not comfortable with, uh, with the big company's policies. And uh, open source fitted well because, well, it, it cares more for the for the people who use the software. So I got involved in in a small business and in uh, openoffice.org, uh, and and naturally I joined the community because it's fun to uh, talk and to meet with people. And we had uh, meetings and we did QA and uh, localization stuff, etc. And uh, so gradually, well, all, all evolved. Uh, and I had a lot of uh, vacations on the LibreOffice conferences, sorry, the OpenOffice conferences. I, I had most apart from 2005. I didn't show Coba. Coba. Uh, um, I, was, uh, I was at a meeting in, in, uh, in, uh, in Budapest where we decided to start the Document Foundation. And so in, back in 2010, we started. And of course, I continued with being... Uh, active with the QA uh, testing, uh, etc. And I got involved in the Document Foundation in the membership committee. I think I was there four or five, six years. And the last four years as, as a member of the board. Uh, and, and I'm always pleased by to see the Document Foundation, uh, especially when I compare it with the, the old days from uh, openoffice.org. Of course, there were a lot of lovely and great people at that time, but uh, well, the trouble, of course, was the government governance. The in the end, it was only one company, Sun, and later uh, uh, 
uh, oracle that uh, that that s sets the directions. Well, we all know the history. Uh, so when we found the TDF, we had the idea it it must be possible to uh, to have a broad community, and so we did. And and I think that that's quite in unique uh, how there's a stage for uh, all kind of interests of uh, of just uh, just uh, software enthusiasts users with all kinds of things, but also for companies, smaller, larger companies that uh, uh, both love open source software and need to make money to pay uh, their bills. And, and, and I think um, it, it, it's quite funny that I know all the sites. I have my small, small company in the Netherlands and gradually over the past years got more and more involved in uh, and Collabora Productivity, where I do most of the marketing. Uh, anyway, I'm heavily involved in doing marketing there now, and that, that's uh, my biggest customer. Uh, so, so I know all sites, and I think that's uh, interesting to uh, to be uh, to, to bring that experience and the various view in in the board. And that's why I love to be on the board. Uh, uh, I love to be here as a candidate again. Yeah. That's it, I think, and uh, maybe there are questions. Uh, Gustavo, if you want, you can directly translate, uh, not just in the chat. I think it's uh, it's faster instead of typing. I mean, as you prefer, but. <laughs> typing is better for me because I will uh, hurt uh the information and write in the chat it's okay okay so any questions for car for the moment no so the next is uh, emiliano so uh hi all i am emiliano Vavassori. I'm from Italy. Uh, I work as a network administrator, system administrator, head desk support. Uh, my involvement with the project is quite new, to be honest, in, in comparison with the, with one with Core. But I was uh, um, doing advocacy for the free and open source software since uh, 2001. Uh, so again, I think I have some some understanding of how the uh, the communities and and uh, projects inside the free and open source software is going on uh, i'm actually a director of of the document foundation but i would like to recandidate uh, as i think there are uh, some opportunities where that uh, as a foundation we can tap and uh, um, use to um, allow the community to shine and uh, to uh, provide a, a better experience for the users. That's it. I think that's mostly make it if there are questions. Emiliano, uh... Nowadays, what are your in, uh, involvement in the Italian project? So, uh, as you, as most of you might know, uh, we have a branch of uh, well, we have an, another association which is Libre Italia, uh, which is the local community around uh, LibreOffice and uh, all the um, the software in free open source software. To be honest. Uh, and uh, I thank you very much for the question because we just we will have our annual conference uh, in two days on Saturday. Uh, it it will be a, a, an hybrid conference, so there will be person in uh, in presence in Venice, and uh, we are going to stream uh, that conference online, so you can attend directly from the website. I will leave the. The URL in the chat so everyone can can read it and you you might try to follow Italian I think that probably Spanish uh, Spanish people might understand some some of the of the talks but anyways we have uh, some some fellow 
uh, uh, co um, sorry, community members, uh, Florian, that is invited. So it would be also a good experience for, for anyone else. Everyone here is invited for, for that, that matters. Thank you very much again for the question, anyways. So next is Paolo. Hi all, Paolo Vecchi. I'm uh, well. I don't know the Italian. I think we are just all over the places. But, um, I uh, been uh, moving around as well. I live fifteen about fifteen years in uh, in England, and now I'm living in uh, Luxembourg. Just by by chance, I just was just working on, on an open source uh, project uh, for the European Commission. That's been uh, for some odd reason, migrated from England, well, from the UK to uh, to Luxembourg, and that's how I discovered this place, which is actually quite quite nice. It allows me actually to be in contact with many uh, European institutions, so I can uh, promote open source and work with them actually to implement uh, uh, open source. I think I probably also influence some of the policies uh, that they have at the moment. And uh, we will influence them even more uh, because at the moment they are looking at laws that are related to the, the digital market. So at least from the European side here, I'm trying to do my, my best to uh, help the open source community in finally getting uh, uh, more space in, uh, in the market. I've been working with open source for the past at least 20 years and 35 years uh, uh, in IT probably even more now. Um, and uh, practically, I evolved from uh, using the usual uh, uh, vendors uh, into uh, open source. Uh, when I was already in England, went back to Italy, and I think I opened the first distributor specialized on uh, open source software. Uh, so created the network of, of partners uh, uh, in Italy, and then moved back to England, did the same. Uh, and, uh, and now I kind of change direction, seeing that, you know, there is probably no need anymore for a distributor, seeing that the market now is kind of ready uh, for open source software. And now instead I'm promoting a, a cloud platform, well, private and hybrid cloud platform, all based on open source, just to demonstrate that we don't need to be uh, a slave of, uh, you know, the usual Amazon or, or, or Microsoft, but actually we can take control of the data and take control of the, uh, the, the technologies and naturally LibreOffice is one of these technologies that allow us to actually get towards uh, sovereign, uh, well, digital sovereignty. So, meaning that you know, collating all these platforms together, all the open source uh, uh, solution together, we can have actually the uh, uh, alternative, you know, for home users, business users, European and global institutions. So we can uh, we can do it all. Uh, from that point of view, naturally, part of my my personal effort which naturally benefits us so uh, TDF has, uh, has been uh, during this uh, term uh, while I've been uh, um, deputy uh, director. Uh, my job is actually, has been to actually prepare the European institutions to actually uh, work more on, uh, on open source. And I've been promoting for a long time or so uh, ODF, which is the file format that at least will remove some of the objections in terms of uh, interoperability. Because a lot of people naturally say, oh, "Yeah, but we got to uh, be able to open uh, the uh, uh, Microsoft document and, uh, and things like that." Yes, LibreOffice did, you know, and the developers of LibreOffice did uh, an excellent job in uh, in trying to be compatible with Microsoft. But it's true that every so often something something happens, something doesn't work quite quite right uh, because you know even their format in a way evolves. Uh, so being able to actually promote ODF like I did, by the way, in England, I, I've been one of the guys that convinced the UK government in adopting ODF as a uh, standard uh, file format. If you can do it also in Europe, then that will help maybe even uh, 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 Latin America and, 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 uh, and other regions to take that as, a, as an example. Uh, and, uh, and, and hopefully we will help actually the transition to uh, ODF for everybody, so we get rid of one of the uh, the, the the objection in relation to the to the file format. Uh, and on top of it, during uh, uh, um, this term, I also worked uh, in uh, legal compliance, legal documents, uh, revisions of uh, 
uh, also, let's say, various legal issue that at the end turn out uh, that um, will allow TDF to do much more the, than what has been done up to now. So we have a huge uh, number of new opportunities where we can expand, extend, uh, and involve you more the, the 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 community to do actually more. Uh, and one of the uh, uh, the uh, the thing that we like to do is actually to start employing a so internal developer to 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 move faster because we we actually need to be a so you know seeing that we are pro I'm promoting uh, digital sovereignty uh, and technological sovereignty in theory, in theory TDF should lead by example so have at least a core uh, number of developers that can help us in uh, in creating our own technologies. Um, and more that's it. I mean, there is plenty more I could go on for an hour if you want to. Questions? Don't be shy. <laughs> okay, so next. This one of the question was Will you learn Portuguese one day? Well, probably yes. The, uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> You, you can do, uh, Paulo, what I do for Spanish and Portuguese and French. I do a yeah. mix of the three and I yeah. speak Spanish, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I was reading actually um, what Gustavo was writing and actually I, I, I can't understand what, what you're writing. <laughs> That's not bad at all. <laughs> yeah. But not speaking Portuguese, uh, not yet. It's all true. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so no questions. Uh, let's move on now with the with the round. So next uh, in the list, uh, it's this. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, Kanye. Okay. Oh, I presume you can hear me. Yep, loud and clear. Excellent. Yeah, so um, I'm Colin McMara. I work for Red Hat. Um, I work in Red Hat's desktop team. And I have been involved in LibreOffice from the start, and I was also involved in predecessors of OpenOffice.org. And I did a stint with uh, StarOffice with some microsystems, just being joining them just about a few months before when it was initially released as OpenOffice.org. So I, I'm familiar with the history of LibreOffice. Uh, I work on related technologies as well. I've, I've, I also um, uh, uh, submit code to a whole bunch of other related projects. So I'm familiar with uh, and co-maintain Hunspell, the spell checker, Desaris, Mytheus, uh, Hyphen, and contribute then to a whole bunch of the other e ecosystem around LibreOffice, the various third party libraries that we, we make use of, um, the ones that are used for this as spreadsheets and uh, so forth. So I'm familiar with some of the other people that are part of LibreOffice, wider community, wider developer community. Uh, they don't always make themselves uh, visible within the specific LibreOffice community. Uh, from my perspective, uh, I'd like running for the board to bring that developer perspective to the board, just to uh, let people on the board kind of have a better conduit uh, to the ordinary developers out there. I know there are have been other members on the board, members of the ESC on the board before, but I'm also a member of that ESC, uh, help bridge that gap. Uh, I think I can help out with specifically with uh, some of the budget tendering things there and try and just maybe kind of make that process a little bit more streamlined. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at that then. Any question? Seems now for the moment. So next is uh, Gabor. Okay, another microphone check. Okay, is it better now? Yep, yep. loud and yes. clear. Okay, sorry. There is something with this. Uh, device. <clears throat> so uh, I'm uh, Gabor Karaman from Hungary and uh, I have been involved with uh, LibreOffice since about 2012 when I took over the localization project and uh, 
in the last five years, I was involved in a uh, governmental project uh, here in Hungary that tried to introduce uh, LibreOffice into public administration. And uh, I think I had some very valuable uh, experience during these years, especially in the area of uh, interoperability. So this is why I'm running for uh, for the board to help uh, in the foundation and especially the board uh, better understand what are the most pressing uh, problems when it comes to interoperability and and uh, making people actually move in, uh, towards our software solution. So, in short, this is all. And I have uh, recently joined uh, Allotropia uh, GmbH because, because of uh, personal reasons. Uh, any questions? The community is quite silent for the moment. <laughs> so if uh, there are no questions, we can uh, uh, move directly to Gabriel. Yeah, so hello, can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. OK, thanks. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, Gabriel Massey. Uh, uh, I'm a senior C++ developer at uh, one and one company uh, where my main task uh, is to integrate uh, uh, LibreOffice Online and Collabora Online projects into, into our online office products. Uh, um, as far as I know, uh, we are the, probably the biggest deployer of, uh, we were the biggest deployer of LibreOffice Online and we are the biggest deployer of Collabora Online uh, with uh, tens of thousands of documents edited in, uh, on a daily basis. I'm a, uh, I'm a developer for more than 17 years. Uh, most of this time I was a Windows developer and uh, uh, since three years ago I came into contact with the uh, open source community through LibreOffice uh, and I was uh, very pleasant surprised. Uh, I met a lot of uh, 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 high-skilled, uh, open-minded, and uh, passionate people, and uh, I like that very much. Um, and uh, uh, beside my uh, contributions as developer, I decided to to try uh, to contribute in uh, in another way, and uh, that's uh, why I decided to to stand for uh, for the membership of the of the board. Um, yeah, and um, I think uh, I think that's it from my side. Thanks. Any questions? Uh, yes, I have just one, uh, Gabriel. Um, yes. You you said that you are de deploying um, Collabora and uh, online in a yeah. very large base. You said ten thousand documents, but you don't say ten, uh, how many use how many users well, you are supporting. Uh, I don't have honestly. I don't have that information because I uh, I know the numbers only at uh, application level. Uh, because uh, the, the users le the, the users level is outside of uh, Collabora Online, so mm -hmm. I don't know. There are users which uh, edit uh, a single file, and there are users uh, which are ed which edit uh, multiple files. So I don't know the number of users. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, just a small question: uh, Where do you live? Uh, I'm from uh, Bucharest, Romania. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, too. Any other question? 
seems not. So the next, last but not least, it's candy. Hello, uh, thank you so much that uh, you took the time uh, to be here and to listen to us. Uh, so I'm Jan Holeshevsky. Uh, most of the people know me as Candy, uh, mostly in the online world, but like my friends in the real world as well. So I live in Prague in Czech Republic. Uh, I've, uh, I'm open source contributor um, since decades. Uh, I joined SUSE in 1999. Then several years later, I became a, uh, a volunteer um, uh, to OpenOffice.org. Uh, I've implemented uh, the KDE integration there, uh, then worked on the filters and uh, I don't know, porting to 64 bits and, and stuff like that. And uh, well, over the year, uh, like uh, from the developer, uh, like, well, and also, of course, like I was, uh, I was involved uh, in the, in the birth of uh, uh, of LibreOffice, I was uh, one of the founding members there. Uh, so over the years, uh, like I'm uh, less of a developer, still like developing when when I have uh, uh, the possibility uh, to do that. Uh, but other than that, I'm mostly a manager in uh, Cobra Productivity, and there I focus uh, mostly on mentoring uh, the team members uh, so that uh, they are efficient in contributing to to LibreOffice and. Uh, and to the online. Uh, so uh, mentoring and welcoming new, newcomers is something that uh, that I just love doing. And uh, like this is also the main reason uh, I would like to stand for the board uh, because uh, I, I th think that it is extremely important uh, to uh, like make the community happy and make it easy uh, for the contributors to, to actually get things done. So that's... It's about me, I think, mostly. <laughs> Hopefully it was not too fast. <laughs> Any questions? Seems not. <laughs> oh, yes, Tony. Hello. Uh, I made a question uh, two days ago, and uh, uh, just one seems to to answer that. It's about uh, documentation uh, and what vision everyone has about that. I explained uh, we have. Uh, a vast documentation, but uh, today most of it is uh, ODT or PDF, and this this is becoming difficult in others' devices like uh, tablets or, or phones. Uh, I I presented uh, an, an example. Gustavo have the link. Bookshelf, uh, it's a project. And uh, it, this project uh, presents the, the books in HTML uh, version to see in browser or phones whatever so what do you think about the documentation what should be done from now on to to present the documentation in easier format Car? yeah thank you uh, for the uh for the subject uh, again to Leo um, it, it's uh, one thing that that comes to my mind especially when you mention uh, the modern devices uh, one of the uh, projects that my company uh, was involved in was the implementation of uh, an export to EPUB format 
uh, which is not uh, yet perfect, but uh, that's, that's quite a nice thing. Um, and uh, maybe it, it's an interesting approach uh, if documentation team looks in that direction. Now, I know the documentation uh, we have for LibreOffice, which is a very rich, extensive, etc. So uh, having that converted immediately in a, in a correct EPUB format, and that's that's not going to work. But may, maybe it, it's, it's a good direction to, to look at. And as I said uh, in, in a previous session, um, uh, if there are needs or if there are ideas, then I think uh, the board uh, could, uh, could, could look uh, if, if there's some money available for extra tooling or, or to give the kickstart or whatever. So, so that would be my idea at the moment. Andy? You are on mute. <laughs> Sorry, wrong button. Um, so I, I put down the hand and not, not open the microphone. So, um, yeah, I, I talked about uh, like my vision um, in the in the session that we had uh, previously, and uh, uh, it was something that uh, that I worked on uh, already. Like when I was uh, was uh, uh, in the board of the directors, uh, I, I was serving for two years, sorry, for two terms actually, so for four years, once as a director and once as a deputy, and uh, uh, my vision then, and it hasn't changed much, uh, was. Uh, uh, to try to consolidate like what we have as the help and was what we have uh, in the books uh, in some some kind of format uh, that uh, would be uh, like much easier to uh, to write and uh, edit and uh, also uh, this format would be possible to somehow tag uh, like what is supposed to be in the help and what is supposed to be in the books and uh, what is supposed to be like in the online version of, of the thing, or maybe uh, like export it in some other formats, uh, like the uh, the EPUB or anything. And uh, um, uh, we have worked uh, with Olivier Hout uh, a lot uh, uh, at the time, and uh, like he has done a great uh, great achievements there. Uh, we are in much better situation than than what we what we had previously. Uh, the uh, Olivier was was able to uh, to improve also the uh, the the format of the XHP uh, and uh, worked on prototyping the the viewer and editor like where you can see like directly what you are editing which is a huge improvement over like what was there previously for the help like where you had to edit it in the uh, uh, in the LibreOffice itself and put some some macro on that so that it produces this XHP stuff. And uh, so I hope that uh, it is still possible uh, to somehow like, you know, convergate uh, these uh, sources of inf information into something that would be like a big pile of information from which like we can do uh, some targeted outputs. That's the hope. Anyone else that uh, wants to reply to this question? Emiliano, feel free to go. Yeah, well, just to uh, repeat what we said in the last time, to be honest, because there was a pretty similar question. Um, so, yes, I think uh, there is a lot of need for online or uh, usable documentation on uh, smarter devices. I don't know if that's the, that's how you can put it, but um, that could be a, a direction to take. As uh, Core said, there could be some uh, some money to put on that. So if you have any uh, actual uh, possibility to get out. I see Tulio has already done some of the of the needed step. 
please provide that uh, for for the for the round of budgeting so we can have that in uh, in, in the budget and we can vote on that. Gustavo, do you want okay. to raise the question? Yes. Uh, okay, let's go ahead. Uh, so um, uh, the first uh, question, uh, the, this is my first question. question. I have two questions for you. Um, I sent in the last session, and it's about uh, our current TDF refund policy. So... Uh, we have a problem in Latin America. Um, we have key members without uh, resources to uh, buy uh, tickets to travel uh, to an event uh, and get the refund after uh, that. So um, the reason of the question is get ideas because... Uh, it's important to talk about this uh, question uh, because um, our ecosystem depends uh, mainly uh, by the events, by the events. Uh, and I know uh, we will, we won't solve uh, this question right now. Uh, but we should try to find a way to do it together. The new board, the membership committee, the staff, uh, and I would like to hear our ideas about this question. And cut again. You are fast. Uh, I'm fast. <laughs> fast this evening yeah yeah it it it's it, it's very important that you ask uh, gustavo um and from a normal uh board perspective it, it it's not easy uh to be honest uh, it, it it's always you have costs and then you have a receipt and then you get refunded uh, that, that's one side. The other side, uh, your question is honest and there's a problem. Um, so um, I, I think I, I would definitely be willing to look at the solution, uh, but it, I, somehow I, I think it, it should be done in cooperation with, with the local community. Uh, the people that know uh, the situation, uh, you know each other, uh, that we have to talk about it, how we can solve it. And it, it, so from my perspective, the board should put in some effort, some new ways, but it, as I said, uh, in cooperation with, would be my idea. Paula? Yep. Okay. Okay, well, I don't uh, naturally have an answer now. Uh, I, you know, I've seen uh, your, your question, I understand it also from uh, uh, other participants that we've seen, uh, well, I've seen also a post that when we could still meet, uh, in, in a way, coming from all over the world and understanding, yes, uh, I mean, they, they have to pay uh, cost in advance and it could be quite complicated. Uh, as a board member at the, at the moment, uh, I don't have an answer because I think we got to look at, uh, for example, an answer from uh, first of all the uh, uh, well, the accountant that should tell uh, should tell us, okay, can we create a budget, send it maybe to uh, uh, I don't know another non for profit entity that would be created in uh, uh, in some local countries, transfer the money. We need the naturally a local guarantor uh, to to know that the the money would be uh, spent correctly. And maybe that could be a start of creating, let's say, satellite offices of TDF. So actually where we can have an official presence, maybe in the country. This is something that I proposed when we, we were discussing a potential business entity. 
uh, a while back and I thought, well, maybe could be the start of, you know, looking at how to create additional offices around the world to actually support directly and locally the community. That is something that uh, if there is no, let's say, financial and fiscal tax issues uh, that, uh, that are found by the accountant, by, by our executive director, maybe something that we could put together. Maybe it's not that difficult. Uh, probably you can tell us, okay, what is the uh, uh, complexity actually of uh, opening a non-profit linked and owned maybe by TDF in, uh, in Latin America? Well, maybe you can give us some answers. Is something that you can look at, you, you can uh, look at so that you can give us some idea? Emiliano? So, uh, my idea is quite tangent to, to the one that Paolo has explained uh, at the moment. So, uh, I think that for sure it's an issue that uh, key contributors from the local communities cannot attend to the international um, conferences. Uh, what I think about is probably it's much more effective to bring international uh, activities inside the local communities. So uh, having uh, much more events like the Latin American conference um, you all had in uh, uh, last year. Uh, I know that Daniel contributed very much to, to the organization of. Uh, also, since the lo usually local conferences are organized um, by empowering the local community to um, get the, the sponsorships. So probably this sponsorship can be, maybe, uh, I'm not a lawyer, so I cannot say that for sure, but maybe part of that uh, sponsorship can be uh, invested in uh, bringing to the conference venue the, the, the people that, uh, that are key uh, contributors, and that would probably help. So uh, that's another way I, I see that. Uh, unfortunately, lately, um, there wasn't, there was, well, issues in traveling and meeting, and that's a shame, but uh, let's, sell, let's say uh, we should see a brighter future. So we should start in, in, some, in some time to, to have newly the possibilities to meet in person and uh, probably going in the direction of taking the international conferences much more uh, wide and in the, in the, in the world is, a, is another idea. Candy? Yes, and uh, so somehow like a uh, hopefully easier solution um, than like setting up um, things or uh, could be, um, but like it doesn't work in all the countries yet. Uh, but for example, like in Czech Republic, it is possible. And that is like uh, that, uh, like somebody can buy, uh, buy a credit card, uh, a ticket, here in the Czech Republic for somebody living in the Czech Republic. Uh, and my hope is that uh, like this is more and more possible for other countries as well, that uh, like the TDF would be able to pay from their uh, like corporate credit card uh, a ticket for somebody um, living in Brazil or, or something. Uh, I appreciate that it is still not, not possible like in all the parts in the world, uh, because in some cases like People need to be accompanied, uh, accompanied by the credit card from which uh, they have bought it. Um, but uh, I hope that the world in general is moving in, um, in the possibility that, like, you just get a QR code uh, on uh, as a ticket and, and just show it. Um, so that's my hope. Any other idea? Any other feedback on this topic? Um, I'd like to say thank you for the candidates. Uh, and well, uh, as I said, we won't solve the problem right now, but let's put on the table to the next board 
and the membership committee and the local communities and the staff uh, to work together to have uh, each situation we have uh, to solve for uh, each member uh, who uh, uh, want to participate in an event or something something like that. Uh, okay. Uh, I have another question uh, for you. Uh, let me put in the chat. It's about to improve uh, the membership uh, with um, an idea to uh, uh, have to allow uh, to the member voting in something uh, uh, which can improve the applications. Uh, I have this idea uh, inspired uh, by my son when I saw his engagement to vote for a new char character, for a new mob in the Minecraft elections. <laughs> I think uh, we could do something similar for our members to put some, to put additional value in the membership. I will share some uh, like so, some link to <laughs> to you. It's a, a question. So then, um, uh, it's in a, a context to uh, improve uh, what uh, to improve uh, what the member can do inside the TDF. Yeah. Yes, so uh, I'm happy to say that we worked already in the last board on that. Not probably to the best effort for many, many reasons, but um, our idea was to enlarge the um, the decision making process to the, any members, uh, really. So it was much more on the board side than the ESC side. Um, but again, the, the tooling is there. Uh, we, Daniel tried to provide some efforts to put that in, in some, some use. Uh, uh, unfortunately, he didn't uh, put an end with that and uh, the, 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 um, the platform is, uh, is there. We have to tailor it for our, uh, for our needs. And uh, I think that would be a, a good asset for the future. So to leave the members to uh, be able to say what uh, they are preferring and to voice them in a much direct way. Uh, by the way, the platform is Decidim. So uh, there's already um, uh, an instance at TDF. Uh, we didn't follow it through, but happy to share the work and uh, take it on. Paul? Yeah, um, that's more or less what I, I, I wanted to say. Um, I think uh, Daniel uh, proposed uh, uh, a platform that was uh, also looking at, it's called Decidim, uh, that has been developed by the city of Barcelona, uh, and it actually allows not just to vote, but actually to start having conversations. So actually uh, uh, the, the whole community can start uh, their own polls, can start uh, the, the, their own question to see if there is uh, something that, that actually, uh, you know, comes out as an idea that is shared by uh, by many, so that actually when we can start acting on that. So it's not only uh, in relation to, uh, you know, development, but anything else. Shall we organize a new event in Brazil or, or, or wherever else? Uh, you know, it, it's one of these things that then so the communities or the group, the, 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 the local groups can start organizing themselves through these tools. And probably so from the board, maybe instead of using emails, which, which are a nightmare, because, uh, you know, uh, I would like to get, for example, your idea and try to get it in a, in a kind of board where we can all look at and uh, bit by bit add, adding uh, uh, additional ideas to refine uh, uh, what we have and, and to find to, to get a solution. So something like this, 
may help uh, if you're able actually to uh, get into it or maybe if you find other similar tools that can be more uh, uh, adequate for what we want to do then let's do it we got to find a way to get thousands of people potentially to co cooperate <laughs> and probably as the board is going to have to find a way to share with you know thousands of people what we would like to do what we are doing or if uh, the community want to tell us to change the direction uh, it's not easy <laughs> so uh, come up with some ideas with some tools so that we can implement it you know but already even before the election it would be nice to have it uh, uh, sorry be, be before the next uh, term it would be nice to ha have it ready for the new for the new board uh, and then there is a note from Sophie saying uh, I think I see it passing by uh, or somebody else to answer ah perfect uh, was Sophie in contact with uh, with Desidim and I seen that there was a so another question uh, that we should have answered or or not or you know I lost it okay. No worry, no worry. We will uh, uh, follow with the questions. Okay. So next is uh, Cor. Yeah, yeah. One one of the funny thing of uh, of uh, the uh, of of an open source community is is that we uh, organize people uh, who are working on stuff. Uh, I remember uh, uh, somewhere 2012, 13. There was a, a company. Uh, uh, working on LibreOffice and iOS and whatever, it got acquired by LinkedIn, uh, and <laughs> then it it uh, it disappeared. But uh, the guys had a had a nice green uh, T-shirt that I used a long time when I was out running in the woods, and it had "Get Shit Done" uh, printed on the on the T-shirt. And I think that the fun uh, of, of the community is that uh, we uh, encourage people when they have ideas to actually do it. And if there are uh, problems, we try to help people with information. If you want to get started in QA and you have a problem and on IRC or whatever, you, you have a, uh, there's a guy who has experience or a girl who has experience and so you get information. That helps. So uh, it, it it's it it is basically uh, in in order to get somewhere, we need to encourage people as much as possible to do something, uh, rather than spending a lot of time about talking on ideas. Of course, sharing ideas, uh, having thoughts on that, it is important. Uh, but I think it, it's not the, really the center of uh, for what we are in TDF. Sorry, I forgot to mute myself, Candy. <laughs> yes, uh, I would like to to add to uh, what what Cor is saying because, like, I hear it that uh, that like. If you want to do uh, some some kind of uh, like uh, uh, poll uh, for something, that should result in implementing something. Um, you should feel encouraged to do the poll, and if you need some kind of budget, uh, uh, like uh, so that like it gets implemented, you can always ask the board. So like they have the uh, they have uh, the means of like giving budgets to ideas. So. Uh, so definitely, like normally, like it is split some way, uh, but there, like at least at the times when I was in the board, like it was still possible uh, to 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 find uh, something somewhere uh, for good ideas. Uh, so so please feel encouraged that, that like if you have an idea to do a poll that should result in something, like bring this idea to the board, and uh, and you know uh, give a price that price tag to that, and uh, yeah. Um, we can see. We can see. Well, yeah. uh, if I get in, I could see. But <laughs> if I don't, then... <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, uh, uh, my 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 example, my proposal uh, was just uh, uh, more like a, a marketing uh, trick than a, a, a case. 
to uh, uh, to develop something uh, the the user uh, wants. Uh, it's more um, to link the member, the TDF member, with the membership. Uh, so uh, the 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 big point is uh, related um, with uh, the next question from from Felipe. Uh, with with a, a little change, uh, what what uh, we can do to attract new members uh, to the foundation? Uh, so uh, this is the is the most important of the question. But let's go ahead with the Philip's question. Uh, is in the chat. Uh, can the candidates share some ideas on how to attract more volunteers to the project? And Paolo was faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, right. Well, I was faster. Uh, so to say, that this is an incredibly difficult uh, question and uh, we potentially so difficult, uh, difficult solution. Um, I mean, uh, I'm seeing it uh, when I uh, when I campaigning, for example, for uh, uh, more privacy. I pretty much involved in actually in uh, uh, making GDPR uh, being actually uh, <laughs> implemented, not just a law that uh, get get ignored. Uh, and I see that uh, you know the vast majority of people are totally unaware uh, that they have rights for privacy, that they actually have a fundamental right that should be respected. Uh, and the, uh, there is a huge number of organizations that just, you know, make a huge amount of money spying on them, but then, then uh, they don't realize the type of damage that this type of uh, organization and the way they use the data is going to do to them, but especially to our kids. I think I saw about my kids uh, because they are being tracked now, they are being profiled now, and that's going to affect the, the other schools about what they do when they go to the, the other schools or are they going to find a job or something like that. So I really that shows that uh, unfortunately we are, you know, moving toward a, a society that is more made of consumers than people that want to actually uh, act uh, in, uh, in certain things. Climate change is something naturally that now uh, is, let's say, seen everywhere so there are there are a lot of activists in in that side while instead uh, the moment uh, uh you know freedom you know software freedom or digital rights is not seeing a priority by 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 many but in a way there's there are so many things that are interconnected because naturally to be able to make a change or so for climate then naturally we need to have support of uh, let's say certain type of media the action which naturally is in the hand of those that earn more by, uh, by uh, propagating on uh, controversies and not trying to get people together to find solutions. So they are all, all in, in, in between. So it's a difficult situation. And at the moment, the only thing I can see is that we have to make an effort, well, each one of us, you know, to actually get person by person interested in the uh, uh, in uh, in the community by leading by example uh, and then naturally well in my answer to the to the question i said well probably we got to increase even more uh, our marketing budget is so that we don't have the billions that microsoft and amazon and uh, and google can spend uh, in, uh, in in marketing but probably there is something else more kind of aimed to certain uh, certain uh, uh, type of people that we could we could do to actually get some uh, uh, some more people interested. Then, if we can do again some you know live uh, events, then naturally it's going to be easier because to the, those events, be, uh, you know, there's going to be generally people are really prepared naturally to accept a certain level of uh, uh, commitment to to certain com community, but remotely is a bit more complicated. So we still got to do a lot of work on the ground ourselves. And this is what each one of us naturally is, is already doing uh, in you know their own ways. So for the moment, let's carry on like this. Candy? Mm -hmm. So from my point of view, um, the problem is not to like how to attract uh, 
uh, the volunteers, but how to keep them. Because it is still uh, that like people are coming uh, to LibreOffice and get interested in some way. Uh, the most important thing is their first experience. So they need to feel welcome and they need to feel um, like that somebody cares. Uh, so uh, because like when somebody like creates a first patch uh, to the code, like most probably like it will be not like mergeable in the state that they they do it. And if it just, you know, it stays there and nobody integrates it for, you know, several days, they just move on and go somewhere else. But like if somebody like actively tries to to handhold them and, you know, get it in, even like if it is not in the ideal form or gets uh, helps them to to like get integrated, it is much more probable that they will come with second and third patch. And it is similar, like with uh, with like translations. It is uh, like very similar, uh, similar uh, with uh, like the design team that uh, that I have helped to uh, like bootstrap um, years ago. And uh, so, so like what what we have um, as the document foundation as um, like the possibility here, how to like use its potential are uh, these people who are responsible for some kind of mentoring of these new people. So like we have now Hossein, um, who is uh, who is uh, like responsible for uh, for you know when somebody appears on the IRC and asks the development question, uh, like there's a bot that like informs like that is new, somebody new, and uh, Hossein's work is uh, supposed to be like you know grab them, hook them, and uh, and uh, don't lose like you know help them to get their patch and, and everything, and. Uh, uh, I, I think like this experience is uh, is like what is important. Like from my personal experience, this was like what what uh, like got me into into open office work initially because I was lucky enough uh, that uh, that I've met uh, some friendly people on the RC who were he were helping me at the time. And even though like my first patch was was integrated after one and a half year, I still like you know kept there just because the people were still talking to me and. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, so so that's that that worked. And uh, like uh, later, that was uh, that was something that uh, uh, that uh, like was uh, like uh, working uh, working for me at least to uh, to get more more developers. Uh, and uh, like when, as I say, like was, was trying to bootstrap the the design team uh, helped me there as well. Luckily, like now we have Heiko in design design team. And, uh, and others, uh, others for for the other teams. So that is uh, that is helping. But still, like having this uh, like in the blood of the community that like when somebody comes, uh, we should uh, we should like immediately notice them and we should be friendly to them and encourage them in their work so that they feel that they have the power to change things. I think that's important and that that helps to get more volunteers and more contributors. Uh, if I may reply to this, uh, Candy, uh, I absolutely agree with uh, what you said. The, the mentoring of new people, it's, uh, it's really important. Uh, something we are missing, I think it's also uh, a good onboarding for the TDF members, uh, for uh, growing them uh, uh, into the role that could bring them uh, in the future. Uh, for, uh, I don't know, running for the board, uh, for the MC, so for the governance. On this, I think uh, we are still uh, uh, not on the, <laughs> on the good path. We need to do, we need to find a di different way, because if you look at the number of uh, uh, members, TDF members, I mean, and uh, contributors, the difference is definitely to, to hike. And we have uh, active contributors that are not uh, TDF members. Mm -hmm. So that it's something. Yeah, so, uh, so, so I would I would encourage the the membership committee uh, to actively uh, like find these people and uh, uh, and uh, try to encourage them to apply for the membership. I think that was also the idea uh, by the uh, to to have the the the, the dashboard yeah. uh, that like that shows like who contributes where and how. Uh, so that like it's possible to um, to to see like who is uh, somebody like who is doing great work but is not not a member. So definitely like people and should that, encourage uh, and reach out to them. 
that is a step, uh, but uh, still uh, we have uh, uh, contributors uh, uh, that uh, are simply saying, uh, I don't see any need to be a TDF member, or I can continue to contribute to the project uh, without uh, being a member. So the, the membership is something uh, uh, not perceived uh, as a, uh, something important. And uh, that that uh, hits yeah. the problem. Yeah, but yeah, 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 that's true. And it, it's important that we we show as a good team and that we uh, etc. However, uh, we are free people. If people find it somehow fun to contribute but are just not interested, uh, uh, yeah more than than showing that it's fun and and helpful uh, that more than that we cannot do i think or yeah may, maybe we can get give them a bonus uh, if you become a member you get a a, a, a box with wine or with uh, with nice mugs uh, just as a starting bonus but uh, or a t-shirt t-shirt <laughs> <A> t-shirt <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, yeah, but but look look but, at uh, if, if seriously if if you look at at what Mike uh, Mike Saunders and, and others are already doing doing in, in showing active members and uh, sending out stickers and with the badges etc. So I think uh, really a lot of things are already done and and of course uh, uh, when 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 I was part of the membership committee in Marina, we also looked at it and and we put some effort in it to, to encourage people to do it and it it is important but yeah yeah well we should have a we uh, we don't know where they live so <laughs> it's we not have uh... a team dedicated to uh, to to that actually paid uh, team. Uh, just looking after the, uh, the the community, so we could, I mean, talking about community, yeah. we're talking about so many different type of people. I mean, you you may have somebody that just want to add some code uh, and it doesn't care about anything else because he you know he's happy with that. Somebody else that wants to see cool things in the uh, in the, in the uh, uh, user in, uh, interface or so the the graphics, UX, and, uh, and things like that. Yeah, um, that are, uh, sorry. Uh, Folks, I mean, uh, I, I know how it works. I'm not saying mm. that uh, we should force uh, uh, people to uh, to join uh, the, the board of yeah. trustees just uh, for the sickness of uh, increasing the number of members. Uh, what uh, is concerning uh, is to see members leaving uh, or members uh, uh, that are not aware uh, of what uh, uh, is the meaning uh, of being uh, a mm -hmm. member of the board of trustee. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is also a problem because when we have uh, elections, we are just uh, uh, always having uh, the very same people uh, running uh, from, uh, uh, jumping from one body to the other. And it's not healthy, it's not sustainable. So if we want to improve uh, uh, the, uh, the, the health of the foundation, uh, growing uh, the ecosystem, uh, we should also look at uh, how to grow uh, in a healthy way, growing people uh, into the role, uh, the, the people that should be in the board of trustee. Yeah. I, I, well, was it my turn for ideas or not yet? Sorry, Marina. Anyway, uh, sorry, I was uh, jumping on the reply and I, I yeah, missed uh, I the see. order. Sorry, there sorry. was Gabriela first. Yes. Well, uh, uh, so I, I just wanted to uh, discuss uh, more about how we can uh, attract uh, uh, volunteers in um, uh, in, uh, in our community, and um, uh, this is something that I uh, mentioned in my letter of intention. I just want to elaborate. I think that we should uh, more uh, uh, get in more contact with. Uh, with people with potential uh, volunteers that wants to contribute and we can do that by exposing what we have uh, um, what we have more valuable uh, uh, in our uh, community and uh, of course uh, the most valuable uh, uh, assets in our community are humans and um, uh, the most valuable from the <laughs> uh, from members of our, of our community are the most experienced ones and uh, <clears throat> I think that we should involve them in uh, different uh, um, uh, 
I don't know projects uh, uh, through which we 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 can uh, uh, get into in in. in in, in, through which they can get in contact with the potential uh, members. Why, why experience? Because uh, experienced members um, know very well uh, the application, the, the community and so on, and they can expose um, uh, very interesting uh, parts, uh, the most interesting parts of, uh, of our community, of our projects and so on. And um, uh, I think that uh, uh, we can do that by um, by organizing some, some seminars or uh, meetings, interactive meetings, uh, 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 in which uh, both both uh, both both sides uh, can be can be involved, uh, and so on. Uh, yeah. So th this is uh, this is uh, this is my uh, this is my idea. Thank you. The next was uh, Emiliano. Yes, thank you. Uh, I just want to mention that uh, for once, attracting new contributors is uh, uh, it's not a simple task to to try to to solve. So um, we have some ideas. Maybe yes, they were shared by by all the the candidates. Uh, for sure, we have to try to implement that. Uh, but we need to, to, to have ideas shared and uh, we must all collaborate for that. Uh, another point I would like to touch very quickly is that the retention of the membership is yet another uh, problem. It's a different one and it's an important one. Do, do, not, do not misunderstand me. It's really important. Uh, the point is probably it's not something so mechanical. There's personal issues, um, cultural issues, um, something different that we need to analyze and tackle before trying to solve that, that thing. So I think the MC is much more than empowered to do that. Uh, I think as a candidate, I have the, the how, how can I say, uh, the, the need to make the, what the EMC would like to uh, implement a, a, a reality. So that's it, mostly. I think the EMC is the perfect place for analyzing how we can attract these people uh, and uh, how we can retain people in the project. That's it. Carl was next. Yes, thanks. Um, a, a, apart from what what has been said, uh, I, I had I heard a lot of things that that are important. Uh, an idea that I had recently, to be honest, yesterday, uh, as a result of one of the the previous uh, sessions we had, um, and it, looking at how uh, we work in the board. Um, uh, we get regular uh, updates from all. Uh, all groups in, let me say, groups in, in, the, in the community. We hear about developers, about the documentation, about QA, et cetera. Uh, so, so we know what, what is happening there. And now and then we talk with people, but maybe it is an idea that uh, once in a while, we, we just have a, a, a meeting dedicated uh, uh, to, to talk with people just from documentation, just a, a meeting, talking with people from localization, that you really have the time uh, to, to relax, to look from all angles, and that uh, such a meeting gives an opportunity uh, to, to people to share a, a bit more easily ideas, uh, to share a bit more easily needs that they have because in the end it, it's the people who are doing documentation who are doing QA uh, know the best uh, what what is going on and also will have the best ideas uh, on how to make it more attractive for others so that's an idea and uh, it, uh, I, I hope someone is uh, making notes of all the good ideas I hear from uh, Paolo, Candy, Emiliano, etc. to uh, to discuss in the board.
sounds like a good plan indeed. <laughs> So let me um, copy again the question because in the meantime in the chat uh, there were more messages. So I would like uh, to have uh, a feedback from the candidate on this topic. So uh, topic it's uh, um, something that is a uh, uh, touching all of us uh, from. Uh, uh, a lot of time now so it's clear that uh, during the start of the pandemic uh, we had uh, um, several people looking at uh, LibreOffice uh, for having uh, alternatives and things to use uh, for the homeschooling uh, and so on uh, but uh, TDF was uh, not doing uh, uh, anything uh, uh, officially for uh, for that so for approaching i mean uh, schools university etc for helping them so the question is uh, um, how we could uh, improve uh, for the future uh, which is the, the view of the of the candidates uh, for uh, the future given that uh, i don't think we will uh, get rid of this pandemic uh, so soon and this time uh, paolo was faster but, uh, yeah, let's say that uh, I, uh, I naturally see the issue uh, uh, in a way first uh, person, and I think there is also uh, Marco here, but also uh, Paolo from the Diffus, which is an organization that is uh, managing uh, uh, the IT for quite a few, a few, few schools in, uh, in, uh, in Italy. And uh, the uh, the issue was that at the time, the only thing I, I could do is actually to try to find something to do online because naturally uh, school didn't have, uh, you know, the, the, the people, the knowledge uh, uh, and naturally the staff that could go to school and do what because, uh, you know, nobody could, uh, could go to school. Uh, but then yeah. uh, we, we managed actually to, uh, uh, to start offering services on, online. Okay, so video conferencing, uh, file sharing, uh, lots of ni nice stuff that then evolved also in an uh, interesting opportunity uh, for, for some organization to actually show to the school that there is an alternative to Teams, an alternative to, uh, 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 to, to drive and, 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 and things like that. So uh, I, I'm not sure what we could have done uh, um, in, in, a, in, a, in a way because it was too late then. Uh, we should just start getting ready now for the next because now, in, you know, it seems like the pandemic is easing away for a moment and then it's going up again. So this is the moment to, to, to see if we can create more strategic alliances for, with the education sector uh, to see if we can actually get more school to implement LibreOffice on, uh, on laptops, maybe with Linux, uh, like they're doing now in Germany for a, for a province. Uh, and, and, and that is what we can do at the moment. Uh, at a certain moment in time, that connects in a way or so with, with another question that I've seen, we could have actually helped uh, those schools by providing online editing tools. But then something happened. Uh, so TD, uh, TDF uh, wasn't able, in a way, to help out from uh, from uh, from that point of view, uh, and that is a bit sad. But I think looking at the uh, looking at the future, well, I think we we should actually work now yeah. to promote even more uh, uh, LibreOffice and to join forces so with other producers uh, producers of open source software uh, to to you know. To be there and help, you know, when when the actual the, the need is there, not when it's too late, when yeah, we are in the middle of the, the pandemic. Uh, I saw before Emiliano raised uh, his hand, but it's down now. I don't know if. Uh... Yeah, very quickly, oh, okay. <laughs> very very quickly. I was involved with with some projects in school for oh hi Thorsten. Uh, I was involved in a project with uh, with schools back trying to make uh, uh, free open source software available in in schools. So I completely understand the point of view of people that are asking for 
GDF to help schools and organization. Probably uh, in this case is, is um, the point is much more on non-profit organization, to be honest. Uh, I see the point. Uh, unfortunately, that turned out to be pretty difficult in the situation we were. Uh, we are going to, we need to watch into them and try to um, find a way to get more on schools and so on. There are programs that were, uh, well, we tried to start them, but the pandemic wasn't particularly good with us. And uh, we didn't we didn't do yet uh, a good start for the ambassador, uh, the scholar and ambassador project, for example. And that's that's something that we need to, to push forward, I think. Sorry. That's it. Cut. Sorry, was muted. Yeah, uh, uh, I, th I think help, helping out schools is, is a good thing. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, the Document Foundation has, has, has great uh, software and, and great technology. And uh, it, it, it's, it's clear for all that uh, LibreOffice Online as, uh, as a project uh, moved to uh, to be Collabora online, but it it is it is an uh, ecosystem uh, partner in in the Document Foundation. It it's fully open source. People can join. There's free versions, etc. Uh, so uh, uh, from that point of view, um, uh, from uh, being uh, available uh, for all. Uh, to study, to share, to improve, etc. Uh, I, I think there's a, uh, that I don't see any reason to start uh, having much trouble on that side. Uh, but if, if there are ways to to improve uh, uh, information to schools, um, etc., et and support them, that that's always good. Um, I have also seen uh, projects in, in countries where uh, schools, companies, etc., were cooperating. But, but we all know from, uh, anyway, I think all people who are involved in, uh, in, in migration projects, and I've seen a lot of them, I've done quite a, some of them as well, uh, that, that it's always uh, complicated. And to get something done very fast, uh, you always are depending on people that are already in the organization, that know open source, that have their experience, uh, already various tools uh, 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 ready for that. Um, so yeah, maybe if you talk about preparing something for if, if it's, uh, it's urgent again, uh, f finding some coalition of whatever, but th then you should make choices about uh, let, let's make a combination of th these types of software uh, and, and make them available. But uh, that would mean that you make the choice to leave out others. While uh, the force of open source is that it's freedom and that you allow people to go to the various open source projects and pick what they are needed. So, yeah, it's it's it's. I, I understand the question, uh, but it, it's 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 quite hard to give a solution that 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 fits all needs. I'm afraid. Well, uh, at least uh, looking at what we had uh, in uh, in Italy uh, was not a matter of going uh, with a uh, one open source project or another open source project. Uh, the problem we had uh, was called uh, Microsoft uh, and was called uh, Google. <laughs> they went with the Google suite, uh, they went with uh, all the other solutions and there's nothing open source there. That it's a shame, we really lost <laughs> the opportunity. Yeah, 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 And but that's not because there is no open source offering somewhere uh, and that there's no good open source offering, but that's, uh, because how the powers and influence on the marketing are organized and uh 
yeah, a breaking debt, it, it's just a long, a long run we do with marketing, with improving the product and growing the, the ecosystem, etc. Uh, it's not only on the power of others, to be honest. It's also that the probably at the how can I say the the presence of the the, the, the free open source project, as we said, uh, was not on par, to be honest. Uh, so they are, they were not so known instead of Microsoft and Google, which yeah for sure that's the the obvious ones yeah, to, yeah. to look at. But you know, of course, but, but uh, being known and being visible means power too, because we all know the the efforts that Mike uh, Italo and and uh, and more volunteers in in the marketing project are are, are taking. But well. Uh, <laughs> You know uh, what others can pay on on marketing and and, and that, so that's power too. Yeah. Okay. Um, thanks. If you can hear me, so I'm terribly sorry for being late, um, but there was some very unfortunate, um, uh, unscheduled and uncoordinated disclosure of a security vulnerability, so that, that kept me busy and the laptop here and. Um, having had uh, funny crashes before. Anyway, glad to be here. Um, my name is Thorsten. Um, I'm running for the board. Um, and um, you have my, my introduction on the mailing list. So, so just on, on this, um, if, I, if I get this right, this is about like how to, um, how to get to the, the, the educational market. So there was a question from Marina earlier. And, and I think, um, I think I have a, perhaps a little, slightly more encouraging story to tell, which is that surprisingly um, pervasive use um, of free and open source is there. It's like kind of self-sustained and, and um, the fact that um, LibreOffice is usable in, in very many ways on very many devices and platforms and um, it's also easily accessible, which is mostly um, um, free free download or or um, already comes with the operating system. Um, makes that pretty easy. So so I I would it's with this question is the glass half full or is it half empty? And and my impression, but it's clearly very non-objective, if not subjective, um, is, is that in, in this particular market. Um, we're going pretty strong, if that was the question. Um, whether TDF should do should and can do more, then obviously the answer is always yes. Um, as, as an open source project, we're always resource constrained. There's always more to do than, than we can possibly manage. And then it's a question of priorities and, and to a large extent also like what, what do people, what is, what, what is driving me? What is driving Emiliano? What is driving other people on the board or in the community? And then we, to a large extent, we, we do what, what what we enjoy. And, and if we happen to have contacts in the educational sector, then probably that's going to be really excellent. And if that's not the case, and then that was the case during the, um, with the outgoing board, then perhaps it's a bit underrepresented. Okay, um, I would probably need some help with translating that. <laughs> okay, uh, well, let's see, because I'm, I'm talking with Marina uh, in the backstage <laughs> about the, the last uh, question to you. Uh, let's go ahead with the Marcos question. What do you think of the current situation of LibreOffice Online? How can it be improved? Which solutions you propose? So, so that's the question for me, I guess. Uh, no, to no, uh, to, to the group, to the group. You can start, okay. Um, because it's our, probably your last question. Let's see. 
uh, uh, but you can start with filters then no problem <laughs> Okay, yeah, I don't have to, but um, since I'm already talking, so um, yeah, that's that's one of the the more unfortunate um, events from from the last from the outgoing board. I I was personally very unhappy with um, with the outcome there. I I I do have rather lots of um, understanding because I'm I'm kind of sitting in in very many boats there. Um, I was trying to, uh, with the old company, um, I was trying to um, to build some business with LibreOffice Online. Um, with the new company, um, we're partnering with Collabra. So I'm also trying to build a business there, but around Collabra Online. Um, with the TDF hat on, um, there was clearly a massive loss. Um, maybe for me, the, the lesson learned was that um, it's very easy to destroy. It's very easy to kind of fork and, and walk different ways. And it's pretty hard to find compromise and, and leave space for others and, and do something jointly, especially after so many years without at least an open source land, no real competition. So, so when that this is outside, outside outside competition from 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 Microsoft. Otherwise, it's it's mostly that we're fighting um, each other, uh, and that's not very fortunate. And I think that's something where we're um, almost everyone is losing. So, how to improve the situation with LibreOffice Online? There is right now no LibreOffice Online that's worth uh, talking about. There's, there's a stale branch. So if that is something the community is interested in, then the community needs to pick that up or some companies in the ecosystem need to find customers who are willing to pay um, and, and then grow that again. I think right now the situation is as it is, and it's very difficult um, without upsetting many more people um, again um, to get out of that, except for, from, from my perspective, working with the status quo as, as best as, as possible. I have, some, um, I have some side project we're doing um, to, to get uh, LibreOffice core, like the, the, the actual core code, um, that is maintained and that's running on Android and it's running on, on desktop operating systems to get that into the browser by, by cross-compiling it with WebAssembly. Um, but it's probably a few days out to have a useful product there. Um, so bottom line is always um, you look forward, not backwards, and try to build bridges and make the best out of the cards that you hold in your hands. Um, and then just take opportunities if and when they arise. That will be my my take. Can I? I presume. Yes, of course. Thank you. Um, right. Uh, Beseda uh, is always useful to look at the past to learn not to make the same mistakes. Uh, but naturally, uh, I, I arrive on the board, I you know, and look at the history of the, uh, of the project, what was available, what was advertised on the website. So it seemed like uh, TDF had a LibreOffice Online. Um, let's say that the uh, big issue that I've seen uh, uh, with the project uh, uh, there were no clear rules. So yeah, the project has started in cooperation with TDF. 98% uh, of, of the code has been uh, rightly written by Collabor. So naturally it was their, their, their reinvestment. Um, but then at the end, there was no kind of clear agreement uh, in, in terms of saying, okay, what is the relation between TDF and, and, and the project? This is one of the mistakes we have to learn from because uh, I really would like for TDF to invest in other projects. But it's important for TDF and the community to understand uh, 
if we make an investment, there's going to be naturally some reward for the company that invested in that. But then at the same time, there should be something also for the community. So the issue with Liberal Office Online is that uh, I got the feeling that we never had a Liberal Office Online uh, in, a, in a certain way, uh, because unfortunately then it has been uh, moved, forked, uh, when uh, say the documentation started being available to make it easier. So at this point, uh, uh, the, uh, the code is a year old. Uh, there are some known bugs. So if you want to unfreeze it, so if people want to contribute, well, naturally, uh, I think Emiliano and Thorsten are talking about it. And hopefully tomorrow we're going to know more about what they discussed about the future of uh, LibreOffice Online. I would like really to see at least the repository open for, for those that would like to play around with it, those that would like to make a different uh, type of platform, different type of experience. And then it's going to be the community that will decide uh, if that code that says in each file, this is a LibreOffice project, should be moved forward or not. Understanding that there is naturally also uh, a member of the uh, ecosystem that is actually the main developer. So naturally, it would be nice to find an agreement between TDF and this commercial company to see if we can both have something for the community and for the uh, commercial uh market that's it for the moment yeah it, it's it there is uh, no distinction between the community and ecosystem partners in the community i think it's it's a good thing if uh, the board acts in a way that it's not uh uh uh, uh discouraging uh, uh, contributors and uh, encouraging them to, to move away because the situation becomes uh, too, uh, too, too risky for them. And that's actually what happened in the, in the past, uh, past board. And I think that uh, Thorsten said some uh, wise things of, of being very careful uh, and, and look forward uh see what you have and and work from that point of view and, and still uh there is an old uh, repository so and any developer who is interested in that uh rather than uh, joining uh the uh, product that uses the LibreOffice technology and also uh, as, as such promoters the LibreOffice brand which is actually happening but uh, if, if developers uh, would prefer to work on, on the LibreOffice online brands as such, uh, they're free to do so, I guess. How? That, that's the developer. Repo, that's the repo the is developer. frozen. They yeah, can't but... commit anything on that. So you are inviting a potential member of the community to fork a, a, a repo that is frozen. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, and this no, can no, no. be seen as something healthy for TDF at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, of, of course, it, it, it's clear that if uh, if there are developers in the community that say, "Oh, we want to we, we want to start working on it," that that it's 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 not complicated to unfreeze it. But it it all depends. Uh, talking about development and things that should be done that's that's always easy. Uh, having developers paid, doing good work uh, and making it actually being done, that, that's another thing. So if there are people who are uh, actually able to do it and willing to do it, uh, yeah, if, if it's their choice, would be, my, would be my take. Now are you speaking with your TDF app or with which one? Sorry. No, it, 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 there's no difference. There's no difference. Candy. Okay, so first of all, um, I can assure you uh, that with my TD, uh, with my collaborator head, we love LibreOffice. So you can see it that like the contribution to the LibreOffice project like never ceased. 
and it is still the same or even like bigger than what it used to be. So, uh, so the move had like no, no change on like what we are doing in the core. And uh, like why the move happened, um, like you can you can uh, like read the reasons like from from the from the time like when it has happened. Um, but let me remind you like another thing that happened in 2010, like when there was OpenOffice org, and some developers weren't happy with like what is happening, and so they formed something LibreOffice. And then like people in LibreOffice are unhappy that Apache OpenOffice like even if nothing is developing there, like the project is still like not willing to accept that the development has moved somewhere else. How is the different situation here? So there were some reasons like why to move away. From me, for my point of view, uh, like uh, my biggest reason for me, like why I think it uh, it was uh, it worked in the end, was that like it was really hard for us uh, to get uh, contributors and volunteers, like when we were under TDF uh, umbrella, and we tried hard. We tried to attract people. We did uh, Google Summer of Codes uh, for contribution into the online, and we had like one, two contributors that way. Now, when it is on GitHub, we get like several, several commits from random people just because it's on a GitHub. So the, the license didn't change. It is still in, under MPL. It is a open source project. So like, I don't see a reason like why there should be a competing project under the like big name of LibreOffice that we know was hard to attract somebody like who who uh, like develops in JavaScript because LibreOffice is known for C++. While on GitHub, like that's a, the natural place like where people like work in JavaScript, like that's the biggest, biggest source of people who work on JavaScript. So, and as I say, like we do love LibreOffice, we do contribute to, to LibreOffice and this is not going to cease. We support LibreOffice technology, like we have put that logo into the about box, we link to the pages of LibreOffice technology. So it is still visible that Collabora online is using LibreOffice and that is like important thing for us. So that's it for me. Okay, Paolo is next. Yeah, just a, a brief uh, uh, a brief comment. Um, also because uh, at the end, uh, uh, I mean, the reasons uh, for what happened uh, are many. I don't wanna bore you with a lot of details uh, and uh, and exchanges. Uh, for me, the important the important message is that uh, one of the things that I actually want to do, and I started already try to do uh, during this term, and I will uh, carry on the next one, is actually to uh, make the, the the this type of uh, the relationship clearer. Uh, so, naturally, uh, Libre Official Line is a project that started as a partnership. Uh, it should have had some uh, uh, some rules. Then at a certain point, uh, the say that the reason uh, that the fork happened uh, can be anything. Uh, and what we lost, in a way, uh, let's say, as a wider community, because uh, naturally, yes, there is a commercial side uh, uh, that naturally needs to uh, uh, to make money. Uh, and and then there is naturally what well, well, we know also 90 95 percent of users that don't uh, let's say um, commit anything back code or money or time and things that naturally we got to work uh, a lot on uh, uh, on that side but then uh, especially uh, during the pandemic uh, or anyway in uh, 
let's say, uh, when talking also with the public sector, the education sector, sometimes it's easier uh, as well to make a breakthrough and maybe being able to uh, to get hundreds of thousands, millions of more, more users if, you know, the, uh, the connection starts from a foundation uh, so that there is, let's say, the commercial uh, uh, potential uh, barrier for certain certain type of organization, and then the commercial sector naturally comes in to offer to offer their services. I, I would see it beneficial from both sides, but then naturally is the commercial partner that's going to have to take the decision. For me, it was a point of view of being able to benefit all, so the wider community and the commercial community. Then we see from the future project how we can define uh, these rules better, so that you know this type of works won't happen again. Hey, your turn. Yes. So, um, as I explained, I do not agree that that uh, that LibreOffice has lost. So, um, as I say, like the the code, I guess gets more contribution, uh, more, more contributors, and that way, like LibreOffice is used more, and it is like known, and we like actively promote that collaborate online is based on, on LibreOffice. So I do not see any kind of loss here. Okay, core, please. Yeah, it's yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm muted. Uh, it it it's clear as Paolo says. Uh, it it's discussion that uh, that need to take place in the board. Um, and um, it, it, it's the responsibility of the board to make sure that uh, the whole community is, is a place uh, for sustainable development. And uh, I, I'm sure that uh, the lesson uh, TDF uh, we as board learned uh, in, in the past term, that, that, uh, that it will be used to do the good things uh, the next term. That's it. We, because discussing uh, 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 piles of details is not going to work here. Torsten, please. Yeah, I, I think um, so. While, while I think it's it's useful to to discuss that and um, and to answer question on on, on that and, and perhaps sound out like different positions of um, of um, board candidates. I think as a board, it, it's not very useful um, and perhaps also not as a community to relitigate this because it was it was actually quite, quite painful um, for, for, for quite a number of people. And what I said earlier is like, we can't change the past. The only thing we can change is like, look forward, look ahead and then do the right thing going forward. Um, and that doesn't mean that we shouldn't learn learn from the past, but, but constantly dwelling on the past and um, who did what wrong or what, what what the exact reasons for for some actions. But I think it's not profoundly helpful. Instead, um, accepting the situation as it is now and making the best out of it. That, that, that's always my uh, my my approach of on on that and. Um, as people said, this is right now. It's it's um it's a project that is dormant. There's another project um, that has moved on, um, that uh, is contributing back massively into the core code. And then there's a number of options um, where this can go, including um, convincing or encouraging Collabora um, to to return this back. Um, or trying something else, um, or focusing on um, fostering community in the wider sense, which is this liberal office technology idea, which is like, regardless of whether it's hosted on GitHub or on Garrett, you can always say this is liberal office technology, and it's a great, uh, great marketing story. Uh, and it's, I think, for the for the outgoing part of the project, it's always great to focus on the on the positives and rather not so much on the negatives. All that said, it's, it's as I said, it's a loss for the project. 
Okay, any other comments? Okay, silence. So we have uh, around two hours of this session, so it's uh, a bit late in Europe. <laughs> then uh, I will open the last minute for any comment uh, from the candidates. If you want to, to say something for uh, our community in this side of the world, uh, feel free to uh, give us some uh, words uh, before our uh, the end of our meeting. Torsten, please. Sorry again for for um, exceptionally not having the time today. Would have loved to to attend the full two hours. Unfortunately, there was some really really urgent security issues. I look forward um, to meet you all again in person. Hopefully soonish i would just totally love to have a conference uh on on the american continent <laughs> um so uh if, if that's that that would be probably my my my, my question or, or my message that would just be be awesome uh, to do more um on that side of the world um at least like lots of things are happening it's that that nothing happens there it's just like um for 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 the liberal office as a community, like worldwide community, to do something like have the focus there, for example, with the conference. Thank you. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I I was waiting for a voice. Yeah, yeah. Th thanks all people for 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 joining and and asking questions. And uh, let me say, um, just uh, apart from tough discussions we have, it's it's also encouraging work at the board. So uh, I would say uh, feel encouraged to uh, be uh, to apply for a membership uh, of either the board or the membership committee. Uh, in another term. It's it's good work. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Emiliano, please, your turn. So very quick, very quickly. Uh, thank you very much for participating. Uh, I attended the last uh, Latin American uh, conference uh, right after the, um, the conference last year. I was impressed. There was a, a really a lot of good uh, work put there. So I think that I share completely the what what Thorsten said. I think that that is a must that a, a conference, an international conference, would be held in in that region for sure. So thank you again very much for for your questions and your comments. And thank you. Thank you, Emiliano. Paolo. Yeah. Please. Was uh, what I mean. Uh, uh, I enjoyed the call, uh, you know, in organizing uh, uh, more conferences uh, your side of the Atlantic, uh, so that we have a sober opportunity to come over uh, as well. Uh, but the, the other important thing, until we can actually all meet physically, is to uh, uh, find a platform where we can exchange ideas and, and start working on projects together uh, in in a more structured way. Uh, because uh, you know, apart from uh, you know the uh, uh, the uh, the big problem of uh, uh, reimbursing expenses for travel. Yeah, that is something that we got to 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 look at. But the the other big thing is to you know opening up even more the channels so that we all exchange ideas on how to do things better. That that is for me the the most important thing. And then all the rest probably is going to become a lot easier. Thank you, Paolo. Uh, more comments uh, from the candidates, from the community? Anything else? Okay. Maybe a comment from, uh, uh, from, Gab uh, from Gabriel or Candy. Let's, let's finish the round. Now. Yeah, I only th want to thank you uh, for listening to us all. And uh, it was great to have you here. So, yeah. Thank you.
Gabriel, please. Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, what I can say, um, I, uh, I, um, I heard that this uh, this uh, this format was uh, uh, applied for the first time, right? With uh, sessions with candidates and so on. So. Uh, uh, it was uh, really interesting from my uh, side, so I uh, encourage you to keep it at uh, uh, next uh, <laughs> next sessions, next uh, elections. Um, yeah, for me it was um, a way to know you better, uh, because probably from all the candidates I'm uh, the most new one. In uh, <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, the uh, questions were interesting. The discussions were interesting. So, um, yeah. So, thank you for all uh, for your question and for listening. Thanks. Thanks, Gabriel. Thanks, Candy. Gabor, please, your turn. Okay. So, uh, I was mostly silent uh, today, and uh, this is basically because I'm very new to this. Uh, uh, leadership role and uh, the board uh, it was very very useful to just listen to all of you and uh, the community's questions uh, it's it's uh, I think it's very important for us to to just uh, basically uh, get a, a little touch of what everyone else is uh, thinking what are uh, priorities and such and uh, Today, I I liked uh, this idea that we should somehow have uh, hold uh, more often uh, such town hall like uh, meetings with with community and uh, talk about what the board is doing. In case I will be a part of it, but it's uh, very likely. Uh, so uh, just one little tiny bit from 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 my country so our our beloved government love uh, holds a government info like uh, town hall with with the press every single week and uh, they are just talking about what have they done or what will they they do uh, during uh, since the last thing uh, event so I think something like that we should do uh, in the in the future. So thanks for all of you to come and and for this uh, opportunity. Thank you, Gabor. Um, well, uh, in the name of the Latin American, the Ibero-American community, I would like to say thank you to you and uh, see you in the next steps of the election and marina could you uh, give us some last words uh yeah i can say that uh, it's uh, past midnight in europe so it means that the election <laughs> is open so Sergio, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no jokes apart. Thanks, uh, really. Thanks, uh, everyone, for uh, for joining. Uh, also, the candidates for uh, finding the time, uh, uh, the team for the recordings, uh, uh, everyone for joining. I mean, it was really uh, a nice uh, exchange. Uh, something new and uh, something that we can, we can improve absolutely. But was uh, was nice to see discussion and uh, participation from. Uh, uh, several uh, several people and uh, uh, last but not least happy birthday Emiliano <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday Emiliano <laughs> well now I am officially two minutes older than so <laughs> that's, that's it that, that's not my birthday anymore <laughs> but yeah, any, thank anyways you. thank you very much for your wishes guys it's a pleasure Hey. Okay. Thank you for the night. Thank you all. <laughs> Thank so, you. Bye bye. Have a nice Thank rest. Thank you. Of bye. Day. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you very much. Bye. 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 bye.